keeping your family's food safe during a power outage is really important because you can't tell just by the smell if it's good or bad. And one thing that's really, really important to know is if you're in doubt in any way, be sure to throw it out. But how do you tell if your power's been out if your food's safe? Well, I like the really low-tech method of figuring out whether or not you need to even think about it. So if you come home from work one day and your lights are blinking, or if your power's out due to a storm outage, a really easy way to figure out how long your food's been sitting there in a refrigerator is a really simple method. So let me show you what I do at home. I keep a bag of ice cubes in my freezer. So I just throw some in, you know, three or four, whatever. And if you come home and the power's been out and you still have a bag of ice cubes, you know your power wasn't out very long. Or if they're slightly melted, you're still good. But if you come home and you've got a bag of water, or if the water's, you have a big solid cube of ice because your water melted and then refroze, then you know you need to start cleaning out your refrigerator. So let's talk some more about what we should think, know about with food safety in our refrigerator. Let's look inside of a refrigerator and see some of the things that we should take care of if we have a power outage. One of the first things to know is what's the temperature in your refrigerator? Some refrigerators have a built-in thermometer that'll tell you that, but in our refrigerator here, we don't have that, but we do have a food thermometer and we keep the food thermometer, we don't leave it on the door because that tends to be warmer. So putting it basically in the middle of a shelf is the best place. And the key degrees that you're looking at for your refrigerators, you wanna make sure that your food is below 40 degrees. Once your food is above 40 degrees Fahrenheit for two hours or more, you're gonna have to start throwing some things out. So let's look at what we may have to throw out when it gets over 40 degrees. One of the first things that's gonna go potentially bad are our dairy products. We've got yogurt, we've got whipped cream. Some other things to think about uh, that you're gonna have to throw out is soft cheeses. So if you have hard cheeses, for example, like cheddar cheese, they'll keep. You don't have to worry about them. Some other things that you'll need to get rid of are any kind of peeled vegetables. So for, or cut vegetables. So an example here, we have some cut vegetables that's got broccoli, baby carrots, and baby carrots are actually pre-peeled, so you'll need to get rid of them as well. Celery sticks, there's some whole cherry tomatoes in here, they're fine, you can keep those, but anything, any fruit or any vegetables that's been cut needs to be thrown away. If you have things like apples or oranges that aren't cut, they can keep, they'll be just fine, and you'll wanna have those handy for healthy eating during power outage. All right, leftovers. Got leftovers over two hours above 40 degrees. They're in the trash too. Garlic, the commercially packed garlic, it needs to go. Peanut butter. Peanut butter is great to eat during a power outage. It's good protein source and it will keep out, out of your refrigerator or in your refrigerator above 40 degrees. And then salad dressing. Depends on what type of salad dressing. So if you have something like ranch dressing, blue cheese dressing, over 40 degrees for two hours, it needs to go in the trash, but things like vinaigrettes, they'll keep. Also, mustard will keep, jelly will keep. If you have mayonnaise and mustard, and it's, at a, it's warmer than 40 degrees for eight hours or more, it needs to get pitched as well. Another really good tip, keeping your refrigerator, as well as your freezer, is to keep them full, because when they're full, they hold the cool air better. So you may want to fill up your refrigerator with water bottles well before, so they're good and cold before the potential outage. Let's look at our meat. So fresh meat, if it's over 40 degrees for two hours, it needs to be thrown as well. But something else that you might do with your meat is if you know a storm's coming, you're gonna put it in your freezer so it's gonna be good and cold. So we would wrap it up in a plastic bag, but we won't, for example, here, but we'll just put it in there. And especially your freezer needs to be packed because if you have it packed, it's gonna hold that cold. And things that you can pack it with, you can just freeze, maybe a bottle of water. Um, if you've got a food safe, something, this was iced tea was in this jug, we cleaned it out, put water in it. Don't do it with milk jugs because you may not get them clean enough. And you're gonna wanna have fresh water if you lose power, and especially if you have a well. So you can do that. You can actually just buy a bag of 
ice, or you can just freeze ice in containers and then start putting it in your cool in your freezer to help keep it cold. And of course, and there's the ever popular ice packs. But if you um, your power goes out, so for example, we come back on the power out, and we've got our frozen chicken. How do you know if your frozen chicken's safe? Well, if it's still cold to the touch and it has ice crystals in it, you can refreeze it or go ahead and cook it. But if it's if it's no ice crystals, it's got to get pitched as well. So pretty much anything that's in your freezer, if there's ice crystals in it, it's safe to refreeze. If it's fro if you went ahead and froze some cheese and it's thawed out, you can still use it as well, whether or not it's got ice crystals or not. So those are just some everyday tips for things that you can do. And a great place for more information and charts on what to keep and what to throw out, go to foodsafety.gov.